made you decide to start an electronics repair business? Okay, so for me, it was, a, it was a different case. I was working for a mobile phone company in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So basically, the problem that we're having is clients. So actually, I was using their social media. I was that the clients would be complaining. We want papers for this phone. We want a battery. We want an LCD for this. Yeah. And we didn't have those at the, you know, at the company. So I said, this is an opportunity. Let me try it if I can secure like uh, suppliers in China that can supply these papers. Yeah. So I successfully did so. Then I ate the suppliers. So I started bringing batteries and LCDs and stuff like that. Then I saw that I was actually giving other people money by... Oh, so you were doing this uh, through the company? No. I actually, I actually left. So I think about the batteries. Uh, the first consumption was of batteries. So I think in, in over two weeks, I actually left the company. Okay. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I think I was naive to a certain extent that I thought that I was going to just be making a lot of money doing this and all that. So I left. Yeah, uh, because I stock, I think I was calculating that my stock was with a thousand dollars. It sounded like it was a lot of money, but <laughs> 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 so I had no reason to stay. Yeah. I, I left, and um, so I had the batteries of the stock and part of the money I borrowed from my friend, and um, I had some money I think from my previous salaries and uh, a little bit of savings. Yeah, it was a lot of money. I was earning other two years, but I think then I had like, I had like 70 US dollars. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those were my savings. Yeah, but yeah. I, yeah. So I left and I bought a few of the tools that I used to fix ones. Yeah. But I wasn't a technician, remember? So I tried <laughs> to hire a technician. So I got a guy who had done IT at school. He just applied for the job because I advertised that I'm looking for someone who can IT. Yeah. Then we, I bring this guy. He didn't know a single thing about a phone. <laughs> like, you know, our IT guy is not good with They don't know how to fix a phone or a yeah. laptop or whatever. So it was horrible. Then I thought, so I was trying to find a way to get him to learn how to do it because it was passionate. But then it, at the end, he gave up. So he left. So I was left stuck. So and, and, and how much of your, your seventy dollar savings that you spent at this point? <laughs> no, um I, I didn't quite remember, but now I had the batteries. The batteries are selling quite well. I'll make also oh, people were buying batteries and going to get them uh put into the phone somewhere else. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now now I I I think I said it quite on a high note because also what I did is uh I had a network of technicians that were working for this company, so I left and all that. Yeah. So these way they knew I had the, the stock, and I was the only person in Zimbabwe. Oh, and at some point we were sending like batteries as far as Blai or Anke, you know, to So to you were people. actually making revenue. We were making some money, right? <laughs> and the problem is I was spending all that money. For me, when you say spending, do you mean spending it within the company or just no, spending? No, just spending. Like, I was just going to live my lifestyle. Like, <laughs> you know, someone like me, I grew up not from a world of background. So you said seeing all this money that's coming to you, and you're like, I I've made it. it. But you, I'm forgetting I have a side, the business is a cycle. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So when I eventually hit those cycles, um, you know, the dry seasons, I I paid a fair share of, <laughs> <laughs> of struggles. So that, that, that is how it, it actually went. So then um, I tried that and it did work. So then what I saw is, let me get a technician, someone who can fix the phone for me. So so now I'm not getting phones outside the brand that I was working for. Um, I think well, one thing that I hate is that I was pretty good at, at marketing. So I was advertising and I was getting these clients. Yeah. So now um, uh, I, I look for a technician. We had a workshop. So we tried to do partnerships with other guys, it failed. Then I got another guy who was working actually close by to where I was working. Yeah. I'm working in a co working space at Vatanai Gardens. So that's, um, so I would get phones, they take the phones, go with them to the technician, take phones, and the other team would fix. The guy is quite good, and I'm still working with him now. He's not full time at my, at my company. Yeah. So I started that, but in the process, I started learning. I'm also quite technical. Um, 
So I started learning and I became good at it. So you started learning how to fix the phones as well. Fix the phones as well. Yeah. But I knew because I always had the interest, but I never thought I would find the time to learn. Because I remember when I was still working there, the company that I was working in, I used to go to the workshop and just sit around seeing this guy. So I already knew some of the parts and stuff like that. So yeah. I've seen how the phone is opened. I've seen how someone just cleared the phone with metal speed and it's working. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I knew that stuff. So I began then to enhance my skills um, and then get hands on uh, learning from this guy. Yeah. So I learned fully from that guy. And uh, yeah, I just say that's that how we yeah, started. That's how I started. <laughs> yeah. So you, you mentioned a number of things there that I, I want to touch on. You mentioned that. Um, you you quit your job uh and you think that was a naive thing to do uh why do you think that was the case <laughs> okay so um you know if i knew what i was gonna go through yeah in the process i wouldn't have quit my job then <laughs> <laughs> or you wouldn't have quit then yeah yeah eventually eventually um i've always wanted to be an entrepreneur um i've i think you know ever since i was in form two Okay. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine showed me a picture of Stripe last year. So I, I was learning commercial. I didn't have internet and have a phone. But this friend of mine, he was the only guy with the phone that <laughs> I put on Samsung. I'm forgetting the name. Yeah. She said, now maybe I send him a phone, my friend Chico. So um, we, he was on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you can imagine how cool yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. He was my friend. He was like my best best friend. Yeah. So um, we on Facebook he showed me Shrey Masiva. Uh then he says he's the owner of Econet. I'm like, oh wow. I had a Cambodge phone though. So I said, oh and I was using Econet. So yeah. I said, oh wow. And they said he's a millionaire. I couldn't <laughs> imagine someone could be a millionaire. Yeah. Then uh, you know, with the environment that I grown up in. And I said, he's a millionaire. I mean, for me, a thousand dollars was like, yeah. my, my mom was a teacher and the salary, I think it was around 300 bucks or something. Always win, my mom gave a thousand dollars. So I said, so I, I became so curious. So actually, <laughs> this is a funny story. Uh, growing up, my vision was to go to school, pass, where you go, which I did and go to university and become an engineer, yeah. work as an engineer, and get a 60,000 dollar loan and buy Telesel. <laughs> <laughs> and become oh, a conventional oh, destroyer oh, person, oh, become oh. a millionaire like you. <laughs> but I think I can buy Telesel at 60,000. Yeah, yeah right. you probably can. Because, yeah, yeah. And you're but, going through some stuff, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but that, that is the thing. So I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. That's so why I've been reading. Like I remember at some point, I didn't have a phone, but my mom did. Nokia Express music, so I think there was a time where Opera Man was free. Yeah. So I would always yeah. Google about billionaires, billionaires. Ah. But like, in school, when I was A level, so when I was all level, I focus in school, like I did really, you know, pass with uh, straight days. When I was A level, I became sort of a rebel. <laughs> so I was reading about this, uh, stories of dropouts. And people who dropped out. I was going to drop out uh, of A level at some point. I actually used to go to school for like two weeks. Then my friends came and they said, dude, what, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I was reading stories about billionaires and whatnot. So yeah. I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you wouldn't have, like you said, you wouldn't have quit then. You would have quit at a later point. I, I, I think, okay, I think my emotions could have shown me that I don't regret the decision that I made. Yeah. I think you, you're never ready. Okay. I don't think yeah, you get yeah, the point yeah, where you actually yeah. ready. <laughs> yeah, but it's always if you feel like quitting, quit. Okay, <laughs> if you if you uh, any job or whatever, and then you feel like there is an opportunity that you can be able to exploit to someone, someone. You, yeah. you, you you must quit. If I didn't quit, then you I would I would want to go through what I went through then now. Yeah, you understand that I go through what I was going through in twenty nineteen. In 2018, I was just starting. I wouldn't want to go through the same experience now. Yeah. Because if you're going to set a business, you're always going to go through some hard times. So I, 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 I went <laughs> so through those yeah. Yeah, very, very difficult times then. Well, yeah, yeah. When you, I suppose you're younger as well. Yeah, I was younger. And, yes. 
And you know, it is said you are, I don't think I can ever go back there because now I've built a little bit of a name, you've got the connections, you know, the, you now know the people that are in the industry. If I need a thousand dollars, I wouldn't, I could get someone to give me a thousand dollars in the market right now. It's different from then. <laughs> so I think it's always when, when you have 70 it. bucks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So so when was this? Uh, when did you when did Ixa start up? Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, it's called Ixa. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I quit my job uh, on the twentieth of February twenty nineteen. Twentieth of February twenty nineteen. Yes. Yeah. And then also twenty nineteen is when you started. Sure. Meaning you're in your third third year, isn't it? Sure. Okay. And third year, yeah, third year. And I, I, mean, I, I quit my job. From there, I went straight to work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. How early did you start working after quitting your job? Had you already brought the batteries in, or yeah? Oh, so, so, so like, like, on back. the first of March, you, you went to work despite the fact that you had quit your job. On the twentieth of February. You no, I mean, <laughs> so what I did? No, what I did is I went to work on the twentieth of February, yeah. and I quit my job. Yeah. That day. And I'm saying from there, I went to work in my company. <laughs> yeah, so we're saying yeah, the same thing. Uh, right also, yeah. also I, think, I think also the difference with me is that I tried to do any company before. So I'm pretty young. When I finished A level, I actually started I, being a social media marketer. I was freelance. So oh, actually, okay, okay. So you weren't coming from square one in terms of uh, owning a business. There's some things you had seen. I had seen some stuff. I had seen some stuff. And uh, actually, yeah, I had seen some stuff. I had done some clients. I I had, I think uh, I was so naive then that I was trying, some, I was trying to, to do things. Maybe I, I couldn't do that time. I remember I went to <laughs> Niger Shankar's office at some point. I was yeah. trying to close a deal with <laughs> Niger. So... I I wasn't setting relief from from square one, square one, yeah. So yeah. I I know some stuff. Okay, fair enough. I hear that. And 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 since starting up in in two thousand nineteen, I think we talked about uh, some of the challenges, right? Uh, but are there any other things that you have uh, left out that uh, maybe someone who's looking to become an entrepreneur should have in mind in regards to uh, from the challenges you faced since then up until now. Okay, so I think um, sort of I could, could sort of give you advice, right? Yeah. That I think um, you have to play big, from start, right? Try as much as you can to do the things you're scared of, right? Uh, you have to learn fast and move very fast. I know Mike Zuckerberg says move fast and break things. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to try and move fast. I'm not saying be patient, but try to, to move fast and all, always find mentors and they have the right networks. So no business business is funny. Business yeah. is I don't know this is who you know, who you have a relationship with, right? Uh you can um be working hard every day, waking up at five AM no sleeping at 12 right working so hard yeah and you have no money and then there's someone who can just call someone and they have a million dollars in their bank account right it's about <laughs> who you have a relationship with it's about building the trust so if, if you can do that i um i mean, I, I actually had a mentality that I, I thought i was going to succeed in the way that i was going right yeah, uh, i was going to sell more batteries or fix a little phone and make a lot of money yeah. Probably really doesn't know how people make money. Okay. It's <laughs> go have a relation with someone, build relationship relationships, join networks and you you can you can make twenty thousand dollars easily if you if you you know the right people, if you have relationship with the right people, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh you, you talk there about uh moving quickly and, and, and breaking things fast. Uh, I remember the first time I met you, um I don't know if this was a late mid twenty nineteen or late eighteen. I don't really remember. But at the time, you had um, you guys were offering a repair on demand service. I don't know if sure. you remember this. Where yeah. you guys would send a guy out with a bike or something like yeah, that, sure. and he'd come to repair my stuff and that kind of thing. Um, like, how did that come up? And was that a success, or was that one of those experiments where you try it, it fails, and you move on? How did that go? 
Uh, so, the, how did they come up? Um, I was just trying to find ways of using my business. So, I found myself caught up, you know, like well, this job of a technician, like, yeah, this is a really no creative job, right? Yeah. Just that. So, for me, I wasn't going to be the, just that guy who works downtown or be in the street, on the street corner fixing phones and stuff like that. So, I wanted to bring some sort of innovation to, to what I was doing, right? And I was also targeting high profile clients. So, yeah, it was just a matter that I thought of. And that, that was a success to a certain extent. Yeah. So what it did is that it uh, it built our name, right? It got us a lot of attention from, from people. Yeah, because I remember your bikes were, were branded, right? I know we were using third part. Oh, we were using okay. third part, okay. yeah. Using yeah. a third part. But it got us a lot of attention. Now I people are still doing it. If you actually now doing it, it became like a model for, for many people to how they, they do their repairs. Yeah. So we got a little publicity and I remember you guys when you're still working for text and you come and you yeah. you shared about it. I think other platform cruise three charge they were interested. So we gave us a competitive advantage and build our name. It wasn't making us a lot of money as much. Right. Yeah. But it helped, we're yeah. trying to figure out a lot of things, yeah. So it, it helped. So this is how, how it was a success. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I'm going to ask you something uh, that's maybe not necessarily directly, I think it is a, a part of your story, but um, when you look at, at that industry of uh, electronics repairs in general, right, um, there appears to be a battle between uh, technicians, uh, or at least independent technicians, and the manufacturers of, of devices. Why is that the case and has it impacted you guys as a startup? Okay, so um, it's impacted us in this way that you can't have uh, original spare parts from the suppliers directly. Okay, yeah, it affects everyone. Um, and then you can, you have, let's say, for us, we do like right now, my team does advanced repairs, which means you can fix the motherboard and stuff like that. Yeah. So you need to have access to schematic diagrams. So Schematic diagrams that we have are schematic diagrams that are leaked somewhere in Shenzhen. <laughs> you see, so that's the this way it's difficult. But the thing is, I understand where, it's coming, where this is coming. It, maybe it's Apple or Samsung. They don't want you to know what they did to build their phone. So they're trying, it's intellectual property. Oh, so it's about protecting the intellectual yes, property. Yes, yes. Because uh, if if you have a, actually a schematic diagram, you know everything about the phone. You can essentially you know, uh, build you can your own build, iPhone. Yeah, to to a certain extent, and so if they have, and so if it's Apple, maybe they are so from Samsung, but the Samsung can ever uh, actually they they will know certain <laughs> things about how they are building their phones, right? Yeah. And then Apple sometimes it's about them just bullying. <laughs> It's just being bullied. So, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. I think you know the fight, the right to repair. Exactly. And also, right another thing is, this guy, they want you to buy a new phone. Okay, oh, so you buy a new want, laptop. Okay, so if, I, if, I, if I'm constantly <laughs> fixing my phone... You're not buying another... I'm not buying... Okay. Yeah, so, mm. is I think those three things. They want you to buy another phone, so you... They're trying to sell the next one they're making. So, if, so it's if not you in their interest. Repair, yeah. <laughs> so, it's not the interest. That's why you see, at Apple... Even though they can fix your motherboard, no matter what, even if it's broken enough, they could <laughs> fix it if they wanted to. Yeah. They won't fix anything on the motherboard. They only do replacement of parts, right? If you want your motherboard fixed, they won't. So you have to buy a new phone. Yeah, you have to buy a new phone. So it's part of the business. So yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. I, I had no idea. I yes. I just thought it's a big bad capitalist, but but I I. I yeah, understand. From what you say, it's about yeah. protecting their own interest. It, yeah, it, it's part of that. Yeah, yeah. And then, in in an interview you did, uh, you mentioned um, trying and failing to raise capital locally. So this is the thing. This is a theme that's uh, it's a recurring theme. Uh, when I talked to Tawanda Chiambakwe, the drone guy, he mentioned that thing as well. That uh, raising ca uh, capital is extremely difficult. Why is that the case? 
Yeah, funding, funding is a mission. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, it has to do with uh, a number of things. Yeah. Okay. So for me, the main issue is the people that you're looking for funding from don't understand what you're trying to do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Explain so that you see, a lot of people that are, let's say, multi-millionaires, retired multi-millionaires, is like someone that is $50 million that they say. They don't want to invest in a startup, even $50,000 or anything. They don't understand. So you set up the, they want to, re, they would rather invest in real estate or put the money somewhere offshore account or on the stock market. They have the investing on the Johannesburg stock market or yeah. somewhere in New York, <laughs> somewhere there where it's safe. So the, the these guys, the uh, you know the the million the, the old guys if I can say the million <laughs> the guys with money the guys with money <laughs> then if you they don't understand this ecosystem of set up entrepreneurs so they say you're in your twenties and you're saying you want to you want to be a multi million dollar company mm. they don't understand for them what do you, what, what what was their path they when they were they were age they went to university mm, university yeah and they went to work and do the thirty five at a bank, a reputable bank, right? Yeah. And they managed to get a loan or something like that. And that's how they went to build a business. So they don't understand this. And you know, I've heard uh, some of these guys saying that, yeah, you want to do this? This is not Silicon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> this is not in America. But we can do that. And they are, they're actually, yeah. you find if um, some young people have been liking that they've the opportunity, they've done well. We have uh, young people that he, without uh, invested degrees that are really running multi-million dollar companies. Yeah. So that's the challenge, number one. That the so, so is, is supposed to be, you know, you know what so you is do? it risk aversion or, or <laughs> because I, I fully get where you're coming from, but I also feel like I get where these old guys are coming from. No, so it, it's money. all the factors that are there, right? But yeah. there's a huge factor in this ecosystem that yeah. What you do is, if you're going to an investor, right, you're going to explain your idea, no matter how brilliant your idea is, yeah. it's just not going to, it's hard for them to believe in you. They just don't believe in, they, <laughs> they haven't bought this idea. So you have to, instead of telling them I, the, the, the nitty gritties of uh, setup investing, is not yeah. understood. You know, you know that in the United States, like investors and your investors, venture capitalists, they yeah. actually go for courses and whatnot. To understand that yeah. startup investing, yeah. So it's, it's something that investors have not understood yeah, not. in this market. Yeah. Then there's yeah, there's just, just um, we go also to our ecosystem. The market is not very much supportive, but we have seen that in other countries where people are beginning to understand this. You look at Nigeria, um, it's it's really picking up in Kenya. You can say they have the best of environments, right? Look at Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah Nigeria is a pretty tough place. It's like, a pretty tough place. Socioeconomically. Place. Yeah. So, so it's, it's part of, it's part of that. Um, so it's, it's, it's a whole little thing, but I think, listen, listen, yeah. business people, entrepreneurs, no matter what environment, if they want to do anything, they will. That's what I was going to say in that... Uh, if we have invested the appetite to invest in Zimbabwe, no matter what the environment is like, <laughs> the wood, if they understood this, yeah. right? For, so for me, my better <laughs> is, is to these guys, to the investors. If they wanted to do to invest really, the wood. But, but I would also say, isn't it a, a case of... Well, I, I suppose that's what you're doing, but um, with or without investors you're going to have to execute, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. But <laughs> listen, it's, it's a different ball game. <laughs> like each other, right? Bootstrapping, something that, you know, do you know that, all right, right now, um, we have things that we want to learn. You have projects that you want to do. Yeah. It's going to take us three, four years because you're trying to raise the money that you need. Maybe yeah. if you're bootstrapping in four years, you have the money. You could do it in a month if you had funded. In yeah, a month's time, yeah. it will be done, and they are moving to the to the next thing. So we're not gonna catch up with the guys that are in East Africa that are, that are having funding. We're not gonna catch up with them. We're always gonna be following behind. So, so in, in regards to funding as well, is it 
is it also a thing uh, that's tied to our population? Because like the examples you gave, right? Uh, you gave uh, Kenya, I think that's like 60, 60 or 50 something million people. Uh, Nigeria, that's some say as, as much as 200 million people. Yeah. Uh, SA, that's 58 million. Is it also a population thing in that a, a startup in those countries uh, can spread their product across many people, whereas in Zim, Last I checked, we had like 15 million people. Is that one of those things that make this uh, place right. not as... Let me tell you, uh, that applies when you're trying to go and raise funding from in the States, okay? Yeah, and what do you mean? It. Like, if, you, if you're going to go to a, to a, to a venture capital firm yeah. in, the, in, the, in the Silicon Valley, they're going to consider that. That you know, a yeah, population is ten million people. Okay, how many multi billion million dollar businesses have been built in this country of sixteen million people? We have lots of those. We have startups that have been built. Listen, these guys that you're talking about, they all they've also started their companies here in Zimbabwe and grown them here in Zimbabwe. <laughs> And we yeah. also have the potential to go to Zambia. I, I was telling you that my company is actually registered in Zambia. Yeah. We have done business in Zambia. Yeah. You can go to Malawi. The, the, the barriers of entry in those countries, they're very low. We can go. We can go to a lot of countries. We can also do it, go to Nigeria. Zimbabwean companies can go into operate in Nigeria if they have the, enough resources. We can go into operate in South Africa, in Tanzania, in Kenya, if we have... The, the, if the structures are in place, okay. Yeah. So, so when you say infrastructure, what what do you mean? Uh, you, like I'm a, I'm looking to start a business, and you're saying, oh, we can easily go into all these other territories, but it's a bit more difficult here. Maybe just like to break it down for me. No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying it's difficult. We can do. It's always difficult to go in a new market. Okay? Yeah. Companies in Nigeria are going to other markets, right? It's always difficult for anyone to go into a, into a new market. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if um. If we have the funding structures in place, okay. If okay. If, if I'm coming with the bank from Zim, right, I can go and call up the market in Nigeria. Okay, so so essentially what you're saying is uh, the market becomes bigger than just Zimbabwe. If yes, you so have yes if, if you have the funding. Okay. So if someone says he's not gonna give you money because they're saying I'm operating in Zimbabwe, it doesn't make sense. There are companies, uh, big companies that just started from smaller companies, maybe in Europe or something. Yeah. Right. But they, they go to other countries. Well, we're talking about uh, Fund, yeah. funding, funding, yeah. and and um, expanding to other markets. So let's talk about uh, Zambia. Mm -hmm. You, your company moved into Zambia. Uh, I'm interested in two things. Uh, the first being, when did you know you were ready to go there? <laughs> And then the second would be like, what are the differences between that and, and Zim? Okay, so I, mean, I think uh, which is, I think we went with uh, the wrong product, right? Our training program. Oh. So the training program, we, we saw we, at some point going to exhaust the Zimbabwean market. You can only train a certain amount of people. <laughs> Yeah, I think most of the people that are watching this are never going to be technicians. So that was the thing. Um, so we say we expanded to to Blai or here and Zim, uh, Gueru, Mtari, Masingo. So we said, what's next? It's going to Zambia. So that was the, the reason. I think we were ready, but the Zambian market wasn't ready. So we went in with we very aggressive on marketing. We advertised like crazy to the right audience because we knew the business, but it was it was a different market. People there are different from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe are enterprising, so they're, they're always looking for a side hustle for the next thing to do. It's different in Zambia. So people are looking for the jobs. So you see, I think 50% of the people that are inquiring your program were saying, are you going to offer us jobs? <laughs> like after you after I'm after done. the training, okay. Are you going to offer us jobs? Are you going to offer us jobs? It's different than some people. Some people want jobs. They want to to work on their own. So we went there. We they like for five months. 
So, uh, the first humans they were okay, not quite great, and then the last three months we see that things are actually going to be terrible. So we see the operation to assemble the train, but we see our plans for Zambia. But you are now going with the, the other businesses that we are we work we're actually on. yeah. So I think we were ready, but the market um, wasn't quite ready. Yeah. So you talked about that. Um, you can only train so so many people, right? Uh, yes. And and one of the things that's always interested me about your business is what essentially happens is you train your competitors. Um, doesn't this result in in direct competition or the stuff you leave out? Like, how does that work? Okay, so for me, the way I always structured my business is we are a technology company. We are not a so we are not a software repair company, and imagine that business is not only really an essential part of our business, the repair <laughs> business. Yeah. Yeah. So the the repairs were always going to take me to the next stage the training was always going to take me to the next stage i think we'll talk about what you're now more focusing on so mm -hmm. for me my goal was to build a, is to build a smartphone brand mm -hmm. training technicians in the market helps me achieve that goal so i wasn't looking at that it's going to distract what you're doing right now that you're fixing phones <laughs> so so is that essentially to say for you uh, long term it was we make our own phones but there are now so many technicians who can then work on these phones yeah, is sure. it in the manufacturing so or the repairs? We, we, I went to do the assembling, yeah, okay. and also on the repair side. So that's, that's that was the, the goal. Okay. Yeah. And we also are helping people. You might, I think um, yeah, we're in business to make money and we make money from the trainings. But I guess satisfaction. No, I was in Numrewa <laughs> last weekend. Yes, someone just noticed yeah, the guys who train people to fix ones. And if we love young people that didn't have a job or something like that, that are now full time technicians, they're actually making real money. I know, yeah. yeah so it's, it's all, it, I think it's secondary, but it's, um, it, it's quite important. Yeah. yeah. And so, in line with, uh, making smartphones, right? Because someone who's who's going to be watching this is going to be like, man, this guy, he's saying the wildest things. <laughs> <laughs> he's saying the wildest things. Um, in in your view, what needs to happen before you can reach that uh, stage as a company? Because, All right. Yeah. So, um, it's it, I think it's wild that I I I would imagine we can do that. You see, I think Mara I, they closed their their manufacturing plant in South Africa. They oh, they closed it. They closed it. They're struggling to make yeah, it. That's market. Sad. Yeah, that's That's pretty sad. So the smartphone industry is quite a competitive industry, and you can't play small. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, you, you can't you can't it. just sell on the on the basis of being African. Like. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. So. And I, I would understand if someone thinks that's a wild dream. But basically for me, right, uh, the, at the core of my heart is we want to create something that's African. But the narrative of being African doesn't sell. So what do we do um, from here? What you could do if you're going to create a smartphone brand right now? We, the companies in China, they can manufacture the phones, right? You basically design and come up with everything that you want. You choose the chips that you want. Because what people don't understand is that companies, a few companies in the in the world make phones. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's basically mostly made in, in China, isn't it? Yes, but no, what I'm saying is, for example, let's say um, Oppo, right? Yeah. Uh, when you say they make phones, what do they make? Do well, they, they don't make the screens. They don't, don't, make, they the don't screens. make the chips. They don't make uh, they the don't chips. Make the software. They don't make the batteries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there are companies that do, does all that. So okay, I understand. What you're yes. Saying. So I think I think we a company that you say makes phones is Apple. Okay, and Samsung maybe they they make their chips in some phones. Yeah. Okay. So it's about just understanding and having that value chain in mind and. If you manage to figure out that value chain. So it's about knowing even the relationships with uh, Coco, okay? Uh, you're going to be using Coco, you're going to be using MediaTek. The screens, they're made by other companies. It's usually Samsung. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like Samsung have heard LG. That yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. Yes. So that's and I think Sharp also does make screen. So it's that. Okay. So it's not like you, somebody is now trying to imagine how oh, they're going to make the screen or they're going to take the glass and all that. So it's an understanding that if I, do, I I know most African brands, they get um, you know, a lot of backlash. That's your white lab leak. That's what everybody's doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what everybody's doing. The chips are the Oh, same. So, so you mean to say it's unfair to then go to these guys and say they're white labeling because no, essentially... No, it's unfair. Everyone is doing everyone it. Everyone is... Yes. Everyone is doing it. It's just like fair cars. Enough. Yeah. Like enough. everything. Okay. Fair enough, I hear you. Yes. So, <laughs> that's... Yeah, if you say Jita is like white labeling, yeah. I know, you have a problem. You hate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody's doing. Okay, they, you yeah. think Jita is a, pl- a plant that makes the plastics that goes on the back of their phones. They're never going to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, that's what you're basically going to do is uh, um, coming up with a deal. Well, actually, you at some point did a deal with uh, a company that manufactures phones in China. Then we choose the kind of um, materials that you want on our phones, right? On the usually we only do the Kaiway smartphone, yeah. and you have a partnership with the with the guys that make the software that you want and all that. So that's the starting point. Yeah. If you're going to to make smartphones, that, yeah. then um, later we can be able to have equipment in Zimbabwe, wherever in Africa, where we can actually assemble the smartphones. Okay. Um, we are now taking those files from the suppliers all over the world and they come here and they are assembled here. I think that's 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 essentially what, what it is to, to say we are making smartphones. We're not going to yeah. be designing chipsets from scratch. Yeah, fair enough. I think yeah, it even on, on my part, um uh, I don't know why I was I was thinking of it in a certain way when I actually do understand what you what you're saying. But yeah, I I, I saw an interview where you're saying this and I was like, man, this guy, what is he saying? But now that you put it into context, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do understand it. And um, we've talked about uh, pivoting a number of times in this interview. Uh, I know that now you, you're getting into uh, cyber sec, cyber security and, and, and software development. And yeah, this one confuses me. This one you're gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to explain to me. Um, and the reason why I say this is because usually what happens with maybe not just entrepreneurs but with uh, businesses is uh, there's a core focus, like a clear core focus that's followed through on. Uh, and usually when companies start to branch out, uh, weird things happen. Is how I would describe it. So. When you guys say you're moving into software development and cyber sec, uh, what does that mean in the context of, of your company? And beyond that, uh, why is this something you feel you need to do? Okay, so a startup. Yeah. Uh, that is a core focus. Is this going too fair? Okay. So what you have to do is, I think, either be uh, when you're starting a company or whatever, right? Yeah. You have to define your core values, right? And I think those should be the guideline and the map of where you want to go. So for me, uh, I think I said this before, my company is a software repair company. Yeah. It's not an academy where you train to fix ones. We basically, for me, it's, it's about technology, right? So, but the end point that I could find to get in the market was fixing phones. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, we say we're saying we want to build a smartphone brand. Okay. You have to understand software if a smartphone brand. You have to have custom apps if you're going to have it. Like, you know, I think one of the things that African smartphone companies are failing to do is they can't even have software that's local on their smartphones. So, we, we need that. So, for us, it's about always taking the next step towards the vision. This is why I'm telling you, like, you're asking me why am I training my competitors? And I'm saying, yeah. it's not about, it's not about <laughs> what I'm doing right now. It's about the vision that I have. And that's what guiding everything else that, 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 that you're doing. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like you're branching out. We are on the vision. So the vision is you have a smartphone brand. What is a smartphone brand? A smartphone is made up of the hardware and the software. So we understand that the hardware very well. Yeah, I think we tr- we trained our best technicians in the country. 
Oh, we've no doubt about that. Yeah. Some of our technicians, those that are really good, actually can be can can build some someone is a degree in electronics, especially yeah. when it comes to smart to mobile phones. Yeah. So we we are doing that. So that's that's where we are going. So we want to we are providing the solutions, okay? But along the uh this line of smartphones. So that's where the thing is. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, I get I get the why. Um but uh so what are you guys doing in terms of uh, software development? Is it from websites, apps? Like how does that work? Uh, we currently? are focusing mostly on apps. Uh, so right now, so what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be developing software. That's for us. We gonna it's gonna be used in the market. And this is developing for customer. So right now, actually working on a food delivery system for client, quite a big client, and. Uh, I think everyone will hear about it when even we launch yeah. maybe in a, in a month or two. So, and uh, on the um, CyberSec, we're actually developing our own um, software that's used in this cybersecurity space. Not complicated software, like, you know, we're not making <laughs> an antivirus, but we, we need simulators and all that. Yeah. So, we are, we are developing that. And we're also developing, I think, uh, it's a wallet. Uh, like what mobile, mobile money wallet. or what? Yeah, I think what you call mobile money. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I suppose we'll see it as yeah as, you as, see as, as, as time and forth, sure, sure. time yeah. and forth. But yeah, it was it was great chatting to you. I remember the first time we, uh, we we conversed in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting then. It's interesting to see what you've done since. Uh, I have like one last question, and I tend to ask this to to entrepreneurs, especially because you guys are a bit uh, crazy, isn't it? Um, and I say that <laughs> with no to, offense intended. <laughs> <laughs> with no offense intended, but uh, the reason I say that is because um, when I think a good example is is Tawanda, uh, who's who's in the drone industry, right? Is yes. Uh, when you set out to start doing these things, uh, no one else can see it but you, or maybe you and a few people that you start your companies with. Um, how do you, uh, how do you keep going when you're doing something that's crazy? Again, uh, <laughs> no offense intended. <laughs> how do I keep going? Yeah, because I, 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 look, I think most people they think you keep going because of motivation. I think the best thing you can do to your life is having structures about everything. You have a life structured, and right now I'm, I'm actually in the process of structuring. Mostly my personal life, I structured my I think my career life. I have quite I have it quite structured. So having structures that are and systems in place. It allows you not to quit. All right, right now I have employees. Okay, <laughs> can just quit. Okay, so yeah. it's it's the things like that. I have employees. I'm not, I'm no longer working alone. I think when I'm setting out, I was alone or sometimes if someone but then yeah. And now I have I have this big huge salary bill. <laughs> you have to pay at the end of each month. Of each month. Um, I have things that I want to achieve. Uh, I think what what happens. I think. When you chase a little bit of success, you want more. Okay. Yeah. I think when you when you had a let's say you when you had a small phone Cambodi phone with buttons back in the day which could play music and go on the internet by Facebook. You were happy. Yeah. You like to the ball for Facebook, <laughs> and it's, you you are happy. But then when you see there's an Apple, you know, there's a, a, a bigger thing, you're like, Oh, I want that. Okay. So it's always that thing that you have what you have now, and you see the next thing, and you're like, oh, <laughs> nice thing. <laughs> yeah, like, you get yeah. married, you see the... <laughs> 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 I want that yeah, one. That, that could... <laughs> at least no one gets to see my face in me, so they won't be like, you're the guy so that, that's, the, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great having you, man. I uh, really enjoyed uh, chatting to you again. Uh, all the best uh, in your in your endeavors thanks man we can uh, keep pushing great stuff